This is the video lecture for Lesson 14 in Clayton Croy's A Primer to Biblical Greek. This is our second lecture on the aorist tense. This one is on the second aorist active and middle forms. Remember that the aorist tense, which was introduced in the previous lecture, has some distinctives that we want to keep in mind as we move into the second aorist. Remember that it is a secondary tense, meaning it refers to action in past time. Remember that it indicates action that is simple or undefined rather than continuous. Remember that it takes an augment, that it can be grouped into two basic forms, the first and the second aorist, and that the first aorist is distinguished by the sigma alpha that is added after the stem but before the personal endings. What about the second aorist? The second aorist will also take an augment, like the first aorist in imperfect. It does not, however, take the sigma alpha suffix. Rather, there will be some change to the verb stem. Usually this means it is shorter. Um, that indicates the second aorist. Some forms of the second aorist are so strange that they need to be memorized as separate vocabulary cards, and many of these are included in the vocabulary lists in the, in the textbook. And finally, just a little word of warning. Um, the forms of the second aorist can be confused with imperfect forms because the endings are quite similar, and they both start with an augment. So if you don't recognize the change to the verb stem, you may get a little confused with the imperfect. Again, remember that um, using the glossary or using a, a lexica is perfectly fine uh, to confirm uh, the form of the verb in question to see if it's imperfect or second aorist. Clayton Croy makes this explanation that during the Koine period, the distinction between first and second aorist endings was not strictly maintained. It is not unusual, therefore, to find second aorist stems with first aorist endings in Biblical Greek. So this is just another case of an important exception for us to be aware of. Uh, essentially, what, what he is explaining is that there will be first aorist forms that have second aorist endings, and there will be second aorist forms that have first aorist endings. So they may have the, maybe not the sigma alpha, but they will have the alpha and then the personal ending. So it's just something to be aware of. You'll see some examples in the exercises, but it is something you want to be aware of. All right, let's get to the actual forms of the second aorist. Here is the chart for the second aorist active indicative. The stem is provided in that lighter green or blue color. Uh, the personal endings are in on salmon, and then the augment, you'll notice, is in brown. Um, in contrast to first aorist active indicative, we don't see the sigma alpha as the marker of the aorist. Rather, we have a shortened form of the verb, which this is from Lombano. And so you can see that just uh, a few of those letters have dropped down, unfortunately, to give us that modified stem, lab. So, elaban, I took, I received. Elabes, you took, you received. Elaben, he, she, or it took or received. Elabomen, we received or took. Elabete, you all took or received. Elaban, they took or received. And then here is an example of a second aorist active infinitive, labain, uh, to take, to receive. Uh, once again, it doesn't have an augment because the augment is only present in the indicative mood. So with that chart still on the screen, let's, let's just point out a few more details about uh, the formation of the second aorist active indicative. First, you can see we've added that augment before the stem consistently in uh, all forms. We add the secondary endings, um, which are indicated by the, the pink color or the salmon color. The personal endings uh, will be added with a variable vowel, either an omicron or an epsilon. And uh, one of the only ways, again, as I said earlier, to distinguish the second aorist from the imperfect is by identifying the modified or shortened stem. Here is the form of the second aorist middle indicative. Again, uh, the same color coding as illustrated on the right. Uh, elabomen, I received or took for myself. Elabu, you took for yourself. Elabeta. He, she, or it took for him, her, or itself. Elabometha, 
we took for ourselves, elabeste, y'all took for yourselves, elabonta, they took for themselves. And once again, here is the second aorist middle infinitive. Base thy, to take for oneself. Uh, again, no augment. Once again, just a few brief notes about the second aorist uh, middle indicative. Uh, once again, to seem a little redundant, add the augment before the stem. Here we've added the middle passive uh, forms of those secondary endings, uh, those secondary tense endings. We see the variable vowels, omicron and epsilon in some of the forms. Again, the ability to identify the modified or shortened stem is the most important part of, uh, of distinguishing the second aorist from the imperfect. So let's get started with an example from the practice and review exercises. I've selected the third one this time because it gives us a little more meat to work with. So, hoi mathe tai edan ta semea tu uranu kai epesan epi prosopon auton. We would begin, uh, as is the case with many of these lectures, by bracketing off prepositional phrases and genitive phrases. And so in this case, we see tu uranu is a genitive phrase that I would put a bracket around, and epi prosopon auton uh, is a prepositional phrase that we can sort of put parentheses around and deal with later. So then we are left with hoi mathetai eden ta semea kai epesen. So that makes it decently easy to find the verb or verbs. And in this case, we have two verbs, adon, which as you can see, I've tried to break it out with the augment at the beginning, the id as a modified or shortened uh, stem, and then the, the personal ending new at the end. And so this is the second aorist active indicative form of the, of the third person plural from the word horao, which means I see. And then the second uh, verb in this sentence is epeson. You can see that we have the augment at the beginning. We have uh, what is a modified version of the stem in, with uh, pe, and then we have the sigma alpha and the nu. Now in this case, this is from the verb pipto, which means I fall. And this is a second aorist active indicative, third plural as well. Um, and it's worth pointing out that in this case, this is a second, ac uh, second aorist that has uh, the same sort of uh, endings that you would expect with a first aorist, the sigma alpha and then the personal ending. This is an example, in other words, of that, uh, that uh, exception that Clayton Croy wanted you to be aware of. Once we have uh, identified those prepositional phrases and the genitive phrases and our verbs, next we will look for our subject and the other parts of the sentence. So we have really only one noun in the for sure nominative case. Hoi mathe tai is certainly in the nominative case. We know it especially thanks to that definite article. Uh, ta semea however, could be in the nominative case because it is a neuter noun. Uh, but given the fact that hoi mathe tai is certainly in the nominative, it will be best for us to understand ta semea as an accusative case. So with that in mind, we could offer a translation, something like, the disciples saw the signs of heaven and fell upon their face or faces. Technically, prosopon there is singular, um, but uh, presumably there are multiple uh, disciples based on hoi mathe tai. And so um, for, for strictness uh, on grammar, it's probably better to translate it as face. Um, but if we, were, if we were watching this happen, I think they would, they would fall on multiple faces, right? And that's just uh, another way of, of saying that they showed honor or even worshipped um, in response. So the only uh, things that I really want to point out in this um, translation or the parsing that I'd like to do is um, epi prosopon autan. So prosopon there is in the accusative case, um, and it's in the accusative case because it follows epi. And auton is in the genitive case. Um, it's a typical genitive here. It's, it's defining or restricting the meaning of prosopon. And as I mentioned earlier, ta semea is a neuter noun. Uh, so this would be neuter plural accusative. Um, and once again, tu uranu is in the genitive case. Um, 
it's restricting the sense of semea. All right, that is uh, this, le this lecture for lesson 14 on the second aorist active in middle forms. Thank you for your time.